So what exactly is this satellite doing right now? Well, thank you for having me back, Emily. So you know, we are so excited to have our edge AI technology in the satellite bus of a Satellogic NewSat satellite. And what this allows us to do is quickly move AI models right next to the satellite's camera itself. So you think about the pictures we're taking, the video that you can get from space, these are massive files, and it takes so long to bring that data down to Earth, and it really introduces tremendous latency in terms of how long it takes you to leverage insights that are happening in the real world, uh, given that downlink delay. By moving the AI inferencing to space, you can do that in seconds, and you can get the information down to Earth in less than a minute, uh, and that is a fundamental game changer. So can you share some examples of what will improve because you have this capability? When we move, so commercial space has exploded over the last decade now, we are drowning in collection. But if you think about it from say, for example, a military commander's perspective, they're not interested in saying, when can I get the next picture over this region, perhaps a region in the Ukraine or Russia. You're, they want to know how many tanks are there, how many transport elector, erector launchers are there. They have mission questions and how often can I revisit that? I need that information every hour. And with this capability, you can now reduce all that latency to provide real-time insights that provide real deterrence, as we've seen in the conflict in Ukraine, and, and real insight into what's happening. Uh, the war on Ukraine has sparked backlash against Russia's continued dominance in space, and you've got a lot of companies looking for partners as a result. Has Palantir seen any new business because of that? We have really mobilized our entire company against the invasion in Ukraine and the consequences of that. I think in many ways, we believe this situation was foreseeable. And you know, at the time of our listing, we talked quite publicly about how we would not work with the Russian government and actually with Russian companies, given the overall context there. But now our software is being used to power refugee operations from Romania, Poland, Lithuania, across all of Europe. I've talked before about how supply chain is really a software problem. And our software here is helping, just like we do with the World Food Program, it's helping match all of the, the goods that are coming in, the beds that are available, everything that's coming from the hands of the donors to the hands of the refugees and those who need it, and doing that as efficiently and effectively as possible, given the incredible scale, millions and millions of refugees that need help in this moment. Similarly, we are helping commercial companies with their supply chains. There are a lot of automotive parts that are made in Ukraine. We've helped BMW ensure the continuity of their Munich facilities and production plans by dyna dynamically changing their production plans to respond to the changing supply chain shocks that are, that okay. are occurring. And of course, most obviously, we have been deeply involved in helping with the military response, not just in the US, but across European nations who are on a fundamentally different footing from a defense and security posture since the invasion.